Ladies and gentlemen, Impact Wrestling fans, I am back once again here to review Impact Wrestling, the latest episode of Impact on Pop. We're about to get right on into it. Feel free to hit that like button and feel free to hit that subscribe button as well. Also, feel free to check out my latest Impact Wrestling video. I discuss the Champion vs. Champion match at Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling has going on. Feel free to check that out. So let's hop right on into the review. First up, we were playing in games. We had Rich Swan versus Willie Mack. I knew that this was going to be a hard hitting match. Like, I'm at the point to where when I see two guys that I know is fast paced, like, I want to see a fast paced match. That's like the exhibition as well. I, if I can relate it to football, it's like we have a game coming up, uh, coming up this Sunday, the Saints versus the Rams. Look, I want it to be high flying. And that's what I want from the exhibition. When I see two exhibition guys, I want it high flying. And that is exactly what we got on uh, Thursday night. Uh, yeah, so many great spots in this match. Willie Mack with that rolling senton in the corner while uh, Rich One was grounded. That was nasty, man. Uh, Rich One had the 450 as well in this match. They got a close near fall. It was a fantastic match. It picked up real well. And, I mean, it was just high pace from the start. But it would end... As Rich Swan would hit the Phoenix Splash and pick up the win in Willie Mack's first match. I enjoyed the heck out of it. I thought it was a fantastic way to start. And like I said, last week, Impact is just with, with them on this latest time. They're just going to have to pick up the matches. The matches are just going to have to be bangers to keep people awake. Because we're starting at such a late time. So next up we had Sammy Callahan over here talk about Brian Cage beating Brian Cage at Bound for Glory. And they talked about Brian Cage showing up at Rockstar Pro. Sammy Callahan won his X, X Division title. And it's interesting because at first, the first thing that went through my mind was like, oh no, we're really not gonna do this at Rockstar Pro, are we? The, the week before final hour we're really not gonna do this right but we would go on i'll get to that later i enjoy the semi callahan ove segments the promos i uh, did has its own special feel to it and i enjoy them very much so next up we had the desi hit squad rohit raju versus and rod singh versus johnny and jimmy boots and tights whomever those guys are we got a squash match here and you know, normally, I'm not with the squash matches, but when the squash matches have a purpose, they're decent enough for me. And so long as they have a purpose, and this purpose was to showcase the new Desi Hit Squad. And they did a good job of it, I gotta say. Desi Hit Squad picked up the victory. I'm still not all that interested in the Desi Hit Squad, and this is a reboot, a reset. But the squash match did its job, and we'll see where it goes from here. There's a hit squad that has been just stuck in mud for the longest now. The previous incarnation and starting off now, we'll see where this goes. But I just haven't been that interested in the Desi Hit Squad for quite a while now. I hope that they go on to do better things with this new pairing. We'll see. So next up, we have the OGs. And we had a special segment that was in black and white, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the the Impact production team is just phenomenal. They do a great job, and I enjoy every one of their productions, whomever it is, whatever they're doing, an interview, a promo, a segment, whatever it is, I enjoy it very much. And I enjoyed this segment with the OGs as well. They were talking about Conan, talking about how Conan was elite, talking about how he elite. Off of Hoover 2, Guerrero, and many other guys. And Homicide went on to say that he was going to beat up the bootleg Skeletor in the main event. That was really funny. So, after that, right after that, we had Conan and LAX. They have their own feel. I like that to their segments, their backstage segments, or wherever they are. They was in the club this time. So, they have their own feel. They was talking about Sidell. I, Conan was talking about Matt Sidell's third eye crap. Santana and Ortiz was ready for the tag match. They said that they were ready to take K 
care of business. After that, we got a pretty good video package for next week's match between Moose and Eddie Edwards. And I really think that this was the match that we should have gotten at the previous review at Bound for Glory. But it is what it is. We're going to get Moose versus Eddie Edwards. Now, I enjoyed the video package. Like I said, Impact Wrestling Production Team. I enjoy every bit of video that they put out. They make the matches personal. When they put out these video packages, packages excuse me it makes the matches mean something more so moving on from there we had rockstar pro and <laughs> every time i go to say rockstar i want to say rockstar spud but it is what it is he's no longer with us no longer with impact excuse me and rockstar pro ove was there they called out brian cage and brian cage's music hit but we got a fake brain cage ah, sideburns and all so at that moment I, the first thing I said was yes they're not gonna just throw away this X Division title match the week before a pay per view special or a, the week before a special not a pay per view but the week before, before an impact special so the segment eh, it is what the segment was what it was it was, it was, was man nothing to get that interested in just something to do before the week of the special coming up final hour and you know we had sammy beat down the fake cage we had ove beat down the fake cage fake brain cage excuse me and sammy callahan went on to pick up the win and hold up whatever green title belt that that was whatever belt that was in the ring people in ohio was going crazy for ove and sammy callahan of course they were so i didn't have that much of a problem with that segment i didn't think it was a great segment didn't think it was a good segment just down the middle so moving on we had eli drake and he was looking for joe parker and he found himself in a janitor's closet so drake I was wondering, is this guy still a lawyer? So I, he was talking about suing Impact Wrestling, and Joseph Park said that they should make it a class action suit to where everybody can get involved and they can even own Impact when it's all settled and finished. So Eli Drake wasn't having none of that, obviously, and he just walked off. I mean, this segment uh, was what it was. I wasn't really feeling it. The Eli Drake storyline of suing Impact, not off to a great start if you ask me. I'm willing to see where it goes. I've been wanting them to use Eli Drake more efficiently outside of the open challenge. So I've got my wish on that one. So I'm very interested to see where it goes. I will wait to see where it goes because I'm interested in Eli Drake. I've been a fan of the guys, fan of the guys for a while now. And I'm interested to see how it all turns out. So after the Eli Drake segment, we had the Desi Hit Squad. They were excited after their win. And out of nowhere, we heard bad da da bad Scarlet Bardo appears out of nowhere. And of course, Desi Hit Squad acting like little schoolgirls, giggling, trying to get to Scarlet Bardo. Gamma Singh wouldn't have none of it. And he was like, you don't need to be focused on ladies. And so Gamma Singh approached him spitting game singing songs to scarlet bardo and then out of nowhere raju coming up player hating spitting up that man and he's talking about he's 65 no scarlet bardo don't need to know that raju a player hater man so he messed it all up scarlet bardo walks walks off and does a hit squad and got me singing just looking there like little schoolgirls giggling and Amazed by Scarlett Bardo. So moving on, we had the Knockouts title match. The Walking Mean Street, the current Knockouts champion, the best women's wrestler in the world. Tessa Blanchard versus Taya, a phenomenal women's wrestler herself. And I expected nothing but a great match here. And we got a great win, a great TV match in this win. Ah, just phenomenal action from the start of the bell to the end of the bell we had a crazy Tessa Blanchard suicide dive through the ropes to the outside I think that was the one that knocked the guard railing back I'm not sure but it was a vicious vicious dive Tessa Blanchard is just so believable 
in her role, in her, in her promos, uh, in, a, in her ring work, just everything. She's so believable. She does a great job at what she does. And this was a phenomenal match. Had some really good spots. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, we had some spots to where, you know, it kind of looked like Taya may pick up the victory. The crowd really bought in that she may pick up the victory. Uh, the moonsault from the top rope that connected got a close near fall. But at the end of the match, Tessa Blanchard forearm star ref. Don Callis bursted out laughing. I found that very funny. And Tessa Blanchard goes on to get the DQ. And I got to tell you. They are kind of telling the story that Taya will eventually overcome Tessa's uh, shenanigans in order to pick up the Knockouts Championship. And to be honest, I love Taya. I think she's one of the best women's wrestlers in the world. She is believable. She's another one that's believable in everything that she does. But it is not time yet to take that Knockouts Championship off of Tessa Blanchard eventually I, if, I, if I'm booking the thing at this point Tessa Blanchard eventually wins in the matchup to where they make the stipulation to where Tessa Blanchard if she loses if she gets disqualified she loses the title I can see that coming up I would have Tessa Blanchard win that and if sometime down the line if Taya is the one to defeat her I would have no problem with that but as it stands right now that belt better not come off of Tessa Blanchard the walking mean streak so after that, we got a nice video package, and I gotta say that we got into a point in the show where there were a bit too much talking segments and segments that didn't matter. Uh, the video package with Johnny Impact, Killer Cross, phenomenal video package, talking segment. Uh, I enjoyed it. Like I said, Impact Wrestling Production Team, what more can I say? They hyped that matchup really well. They got me excited for it. Uh, we got a Joy and Grace video package as well. I cannot wait to see her. Uh, you've seen my thoughts on her already. I think she's phenomenal. Has phenomenal strength. Showed it very well at All In too. She lifted up Brian Cage like a baby. So I'm looking forward to seeing what she brings to the Knockouts division. All of these were all well and fine. But they came back to back to back. And it's like, ah, another talking segment. Another talking segment. And we got a flashback. Uh, from 2013 with Gil Kim and Candice LeRae. Then after that, we got Pentagon and Phoenix. Another phenomenal video package. I enjoyed it, but that was three video packages and a flashback back to back to back to back. They have to space those things out better. And we also, uh, and uh, let me not leave out, Brian Cage uh, responding to Sammy Callahan and responding to the shenanigans that he pulled out with the fake Brian Cage. He said that he will show up next week at Rockstar Pro and give Brian, uh, Sammy Callahan the real Brian Cage experience. So that's five segments to where it's like talking, talking, talking. They have to do a better job of spacing these things out because, you know, I can get to a point in the show to where, you know, with this time shift, we're talking about it starts for 9 o'clock for me. And 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. 11 o'clock like it's somewhere in that point I'm gonna get tired and you give me segments these back-to-back -back talking segments with the flashback in between I'll get tired and you know I'll start to duck off start to look at my watch and most people would just turn off when they get tired I'll keep watching because I like to review it as much as I can much as reviews that I can but you know those can be ways that you can lose a little bit of viewership but moving on, tag team titles. Ah, the tag team titles were n were on the line. Excuse me, LAX versus Matt Sydal and Ethan Page. Ah, this was a really good match. Sydal was on his third eye stuff to start the match. Is it anybody else but uh, besides me that's kind of getting tired of the third eye stuff? Like, I want the original Matt Seidel that came in to Impact Wrestling. I thought he was really good for the third eye stuff. He was doing some really good things. Not that I'm against the third eye stuff. It's just getting a little tire tiring. It's getting a little stale. That's it. But, to start the match, uh, Santana tagged in, and I gotta say that Santana, I said nearly every week, Santana's athleticism is so over, underrated, excuse me, so underrated. 
this guy can really fly. He is a phenomenal worker. He has the look. I gotta say, if it ever came down to it to where LAX split up, Santana would have a phenomenal singles run. That's just my opinion. But looking at the match, he had a phenomenal apron dive over Conan as well. I really love that. The match was really good. A high speed match. Like I said, when you look at certain guys, you think high pace. LAX versus Matt Sado on Ethan Page. You think a high pace match it was a high pace match. I enjoyed every bit of it. It would end as LAX would hit a double team backbreaker and they would go on to retain the tag team titles. LAX picks up the win in a fantastic match. The storyline rolls along with LAX, Matt Sadeo, and Ethan Page, giving LAX something to do outside of fighting the OGs. So after that, we had Ali, and I don't know what was going on with Ali in that mirror, but something is something dark is going on with Ali in that mirror. We are yet to find out what it is. Kira tried to get it out of her, and it took forever, but finally, Ali admitted that the darkness was getting to her. Kara said that she had her back. They said they needed to stop things with Sue Young. So I'm very interested into this Dark Alley storyline, wherever it's gonna go. Uh, I like what, like I said, Impact Wrestling Team, Impact Production Team, excuse me. I love everything that they do and this was nothing less. I loved it. And I'm interested to see where Ali goes after all of this storyline is complete. So next up we had Pentagon and we had Homicide in the main event. We had another fierce suicide dive to Pentagon from Homicide. It just kind of came out of nowhere. Pentagon celebrated with his several medal one too many times. By the time he got to medal, Homicide was coming through the ropes, humming through the ropes. Fierce suicide dive. I loved every bit of that. This was a phenomenal match, and I expect nothing less than a phenomenal match. It didn't get the time that it should have gotten. Like, it only went for like four minutes, maybe five minutes, and they packed a lot of action into those five minutes. So, Homicide was going for the Gringo Killer. The match would end as Pentagon would get the cradle for the dub. Pentagon picks up the victory. So, I, I liked it. I don't like the time that it got, but it moved along the storyline. And they all brought post match. And the King and OGs went out on the battle. So, the storyline continues with the OGs and the Lucha Bros. After that, we got Killer Cross and we got a really great video package setting up his match with Johnny Impact next week at final hour i loved every bit of it impact production team like i've said throughout this entire review great job there so that was the end of impact wrestling i gotta say that comparing it to last week our last week was just a i don't want to say it was a drag last week but i didn't like it last week for whatever reason maybe it was me getting adjusted to uh, watching the wrestling the my weekly wrestling show at nine o'clock to eleven o'clock to where I was just looking at the phone the whole show, laying down the whole show, and it was just tough last week. Not a whole lot of chemistry going last week, and I didn't really like it that much last week. I loved the main event. Love, 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 loved it. But the show overall just kind of dragged a little bit. This show, this past week, did not drag whatsoever. I loved it. Great pace. I, it was There was that time where it was a lot of talking segments in between to where it's like, uh, I didn't like that, but overall, I like the show. So let me know your thoughts on Impact Wrestling. Let me know your thoughts on Final Hour. What are you looking forward to the most? Uh, Jordan Grace, uh, Brian Cage versus Sammy Callahan, Moose versus Eddie Edwards in the world title match, Johnny Impact versus Killer Cross. Let me know your thoughts, whether that be on YouTube, at OMG Corey B, or Twitter, at OMG Corey B, at Too Sweet Pod. Let me know your thoughts. I am 